Oh, no, I just had my revenue. All right, I'd like to Treasury call the town thing. board meeting of the town of Lake Mills to order January 9th, 2018, here at 8 p.m. The notice was posted at the town hall, the North End Boat Launch, the call to sec on Finch Brothers Road, and also on the town's website. Item two on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. I'll make a motion to adopt January's uh, agenda as printed. I can second. Is there any discussion on the agenda? One question. Um, the January agenda, is that just this agenda or is it the, a monthly consolidation of agendas? What does that mean? This is our meeting agenda for this and evening. And we're just, you, you've just motioned to accept this, yes. this agenda. Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm glad you asked. You'll get the hang of this thing. <laughs> All right, hearing no more discussion on the agenda, is there a motion to approve the agenda? We did that already. Yeah. Lee seconded. Oh, we did it, okay. No, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Item three on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from the December meeting. And Sarah, I thought you did a super job. I thought so too. Kind of serious. I'll make a motion to approve December 12th monthly minutes. No, I'll second. And these are available to you guys online if you would like to look at them or you could have a copy tonight. All in favor of approving the minutes as published, please say aye. 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 aye and all opposed, the same sign. <clears throat> Item four, approval of the treasurer's report. And thank you, Sharon. I see you've been pretty busy. Yeah. 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 Yep. I'll make a motion to approve January's treasurer's report. And I will second that. Is there any discussion on the January 18 treasurer's report? <laughs> I thought there was one that I had a question. It was like a 15 cent silly charge or something. For, oh, yeah. The oh. payroll accountant's world. Hey, that's oh. pretty cool. No, no, they. What? <laughs> that, that, I thought that got refunded. It didn't get refunded yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stamp County switched to a different processor, so oh. they had to test it, and it gets re re replaced right away. <laughs> I thought that was pretty. I was trying to figure out. This is in, in the accountants' world. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, it's an exciting world. Let me there. tell you. All right. All in favor of moving right? the January 18th <laughs> treasurer's report, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. In the same sign, if you are opposed. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to handle the approval of the general funding vouching. I'll make a motion to approve January's disbursements of two million one hundred forty-eight thousand four hundred sixty-six. Yeah, two million one hundred forty-eight thousand four hundred sixty-six dollars and two cents. You got it, Dave. I'll second that. What point of question? Um, where was that dispersed to? A lot of it was school tax. Um, MATC. Here, you can take it and look it yep. over. Uh, tax you. overpayment settlement for people that have escrows. Here. And here are the revenues. So that general fund vouching, that's that's funds received or funds that's, that's as funds expended? Funds distributed today and funds that were received over the last month. Well, and you'll familiarize yourself with the list. Thank you. That'll be helpful. No, I don't have an agenda, though, so. Oh, here. What's oh, yes, I do. I have an agenda. Sorry. I'm sorry. Is it this one or a different one? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to do, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to kill me tonight. Okay. <laughs> all in favor of approving the disbursements as published, please say aye. 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 And all opposed, the same Who sign. Who seconded the general fund? I did. And now... We don't usually have to approve the checks that come in, but they are all there in your receivables. Sure. Okay. All right? And that's just this month? Yes. December. Or December? The whole month of December. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Item six, the reports. A, Ryan is here in place of our police chief, who I feel bad about. You have something you'd like to report to us, sir? Absolutely. All right, so for December, um, there were 40 hours um, of patrol. Um, during those 40 hours, there were five complaints that were handled, uh, uh, consisting of five and a half hours being used on those complaints. 
Um, 20 total traffic stops. Um, 13 warnings, 12 citations, uh, 11 and a half hours of radar, uh, three ordinance citations. Uh, we did uh, eight residence and business checks um, and 14 park checks and two extra patrols. Great. You have your new squad? Yep, brand new squad. Just, um, just picked it up Sunday. Bells, lights, and whistles are all done? Yep. Okay. Running good. Um, I have a sign in the office. Would you get it for me? me? You're my assistant tonight. <laughs> Would you go in the office? Like? There's a sign in the office I'd like it's to show the public. Bright red and white sign. You won't be able to miss it. Right up against the pilot cap. I appreciate you being my servant. <laughs> I should have brought it. <clears throat> we have a new ICE ordinance. It is an ordinance that is um, on the books now to govern activity on Rock Lake. And I guess um, just lean it up against the counter here, maybe. Right in front of me, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay, so anyway, it's just a sign. They're double-sided. They basically state the new things that are important in the ordinance, which is no one should operate a vehicle at a speed greater than is reasonably or prudent. And that has to do with the weather as well as um, ice conditions. Vehicles must be lighted um, front and tail. No person shall endanger other persons or property by negligent operation of any kind of a motor vehicle. Motor vehicles must operate 150 feet from shore after entering or leaving the ice-bound waters. And it is illegal for any person to tow or pull anyone on an object behind their boat. Or I mean, not their boat. <laughs> their motor Snowmobile. vehicle. <laughs> And that's kind of the highlights of our new ordinance. It is available online. We're going to be posting these signs. Enforcement is always the trick with this, but I wanted the public to understand that we do have a new ordinance that governs activity on the ice. So thanks. Uh, B, Joint Rock Lake Committee report. I think we just got it. <laughs> they have been very helpful with these signs in developing the ordinance, and um, now it's in place. Um, Question. Yes. Has that committee uh, been established by the by the town board and then reports back to you? It's like a uh, an arm of the town of Lake Mills, or is that a separate committee? Is that a community committee? What what is that exactly? The Joint Rock Lake Committee is a group that was formed when after the fact when we tried to form a lake management district and were unsuccessful in doing that. This is a joint governing body. We have an intergovernmental agreement with the city. There are two members from the city on the committee and three from the town. And we work um, on the same night as the planning committee at 6 p.m. Those guys usually meet for an hour and a half. They've been very dedicated. They've helped us with our ordinances and they make recommendations on other things that come up that so affect Rockley. Okay. Working Committee of the Town, which of course is open at any time. <clears throat> Item C, Planning Commission Report, Lee. Yes, we met on January 2nd. Uh, items of note is uh, Rob retired. So uh, Matt Zangle is the Acting County Director of Planning and Zoning. Um, then we met on, um, I guess the application filed on the uh, condo plat by North Shore Estates. It's uh, item 8A on here. And that was tabled, uh, more or less there was concerns about safety and with the um, radius of the turning circle and then you know, getting vehicles in and out. Uh, there's some concerns on that, so they were going to come back with uh, some revisions and changes on the plan. Uh, there was also some concerns about the view on to County B to make sure that was, um, you know, everything was prudent there as far as visibility with, for traffic. And then uh, some concerns as well on regarding where the wells are going to be placed. Um, so that was another issue that was brought up. So it, it was tabled, and they're going to come back in February, and then we'll ideally make a decision then on that. All right, Lee, thank you. 
Is there any other committee reports? Cambridge Fire Commission, the commission was met on the 13th of December. Really nothing really super earth shattering as far as um, mostly all housekeeping. Um, the, inter uh, the intergovernmental agreement, which was further down uh, the agenda, that we just ran out of time and we went over the uh, a draft with it again and it's going out to the attorney rather than having an attorney present to the meeting to cut down on the cost. We did it ourselves with his suggestions that he was there a couple, three months ago. And on our next meeting, we're gonna then go over it again and we're also move the uh, possible retirement plan into 2019 instead of uh, this year at 18. Um, Cambridge Foundation, we put in a grant for the half of the cost of the study for the uh, possible um, uh, intergovernment uh, joint venture possibly with the town of Deerfield in um, Deer Grove and having a uh, central location for um, uh, ambulances. Um, let's see, then, the, and also uh, we put in a request for uh, a grant from the foundation to possibly help us with a fire truck replacement. Um, the fire chief, um, he's quite adamant that we're gonna have to re replace two fire trucks in the next two years. One of them is 25 years old and if we wait too long, then we're gonna to have to do two trucks in one year. Um, these things go up about $20,000 a year, and so we're trying to figure out some way we can get it done. So hopefully we can come up with a quite a bit of money because this thing is gonna be about $700,000. So we will see what happens there. Um, financially, we had always been doing quite well. Um, got caught up with uh, uh, quite an increase in workman's comp and a couple other things that, that came down, some expenditures that came down the road. So we were unable to fund any of the, the reserves. And obviously we have a general um, checking, um, which had $16,000 in it. The building reserve, um, that's just for any improvements we needed in the buildings. And that has $53,000 in it. We always like to be able to fund those by about ten dollars to $15,000 a year. So we'd like to say we're not able to fund any of them. The fire department equipment reserve, there was 46,000 and some change. Did not get funded. The EMS reserve, um, 25,000 and that also did not get um, funded either. Um, out of the $16,000 for, that was the beginning of December. By the time we got all done, end of the year, we had $3,000 left, which really is kind of tough because most of the time we always are able to cash apply thirty to $50,000. So emergency services, folks, is really getting very expensive. So I'm sure that uh, between the fire truck and a couple other things, we'll be coming back. I did get the bill <laughs> for it too. <laughs> Late, it was Friday. I didn't see it until after I'd cut checks already, so we'll have to go February. Okay, all right, I'll tell Steve. And the other reason, too, why that came out so early was because with only $3,000 left in the checkbook, mm -hmm. um, we're going to have bills. And we can, the, the EMS, because the EMS, what they do is they get all of the run money, and they have pledged us $20,000 for 2018. So we can dip into a little bit of that, but um, we hate to do it just yet. So that's why the bills went out early. Okay, appreciate you serving on that. You guys have not met since December then? We usually try to meet quarterly mm -hmm. unless there is issues. Fire burning? <laughs> <laughs> Seems there's a fire burning over there. Yeah, over that fire truck. Well, you know, it's... What is it? How do you pay for something? I didn't see the well, 700000 $700,000. $700,000 figure. I did not see that. Well, you probably saw $695,000. Okay. $700,000 is easier to say. Okay. Okay, thanks, Dave. Appreciate you working on that. Yep. Have we received anything from the city of Lake Mills? No, not a thing. All right, thank you.
Um, item seven in our agenda is the period of public comment and questions. This is for anything that is not on the, uh, the agenda and for discussion only. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to attend? Sure, go ahead. I'm going to try and skim over this. I have a lot of things I'd really like to express. But I'd like to start out by saying um, Lake Mills is a great place. It, Lake Mills brought us all the way from the West Coast. You know, we found this town and, and uh, in our adventures. And it's like, we're like, wow, we want to live here. So we up and moved, you know. And, and uh, so, you know, the, the whole problem with this discussion about the odor situation that's been going on forever is that there's never a resolution to it. And I think people are looking at it incorrectly. And I say that because people have been doing something that I, I did be, without realizing it. And what that is is that I immediately decided that the problem with the odor is that you guys aren't doing anything about it. And so my goal was to get state statutes and, and, uh, and statements from the Roberts Rules of Order and bring those in here in order to, to show that, because when, when we had a previous meeting and, and I was firing questions at you and I was being aggressive, and you said, what is it that you think we can do? Or what do you expect us to do? I don't remember your exact wording, but, and I said, you have a lot of power. You can do this, you can do that. Do you remember that conversation? Okay, so that, that's what people have been doing. They've been putting that load on you, putting that blame on you guys. And, and I was putting the blame on you guys just being a newcomer coming in here. And I've served on other boards. And so, you know, we were having dinner tonight, and I had just finished putting this all together. And I had this, you know, I was going to lay it on you. And a poignant moment in mine and my wife's life is one day back in 1985 in Hawaii when she was stirring spaghetti sauce, and I didn't tell her how I felt. And we lost a lot of time because of that. So tonight, she was stirring the spaghetti sauce and we were mad at each other for whatever reason. <laughs> and um, I said, wow, I'm having a flashback to 1985 in Hawaii. And she said, maybe you're the same person or something to that effect. I don't want to quote her, but that statement, that one statement made me realize that I was still fighting. I was still fighting people. I was still trying to, you know, win. And um, that's not why I moved here. That's not, you know, I mean, that was me in another life. And I moved here because I wanted to make good friends. And I wanted to relax. I wanted to retire. I wanted to drink beer and catch fish, you know. And this thing has really been a thorn in my side. So I got upset about it. And I got upset for everybody else that's had to deal with it. So, with that in mind, first of all, I'd like to apologize to my wife for being a jerk today. And I'd like to thank her <laughs> for saying that because it really changed the whole course of this statement. Tonight. So, what I realized from that is that people haven't been working together. And so, I started wondering why that is. Why, why aren't people working together? Why? You know, it's been years and years and years and years. And nothing's really ever been done. I mean, there was a lawsuit against Aaron Johnson way back in the day brought by members that, uh, you know, up on the, along the same lines. But other than that, nothing's been done. And, and so why is that? And the more I delved into the right to farm law and the, the Wisconsin state statutes and the DNR regulations, I realized that they are actually legally operating. You know, they're doing what's within their right, according to the law. So, of course, you can't do anything. So that in itself is the problem. 
And so there's a number of ways to solve that. One is to proceed up the chain of command, go to Jefferson County, go to you know, whatever that next step is, and then the state. And then on the other side, there's the DNR, and then the state regulators who, you know, all the way, and then up to the EPA. You know, I mean, we, we could travel that road. And that would be a way to force them to do something. <coughs> However, the reason why I moved here is because people here are nice. People try to get along. People try to help each other. And so I went and I met with Bobby Harris a number of times. And I am convinced that he is making the effort to try and improve this problem. I'm convinced of that. And I told him in secret, you know, not really secret, in, you know, we, I didn't say anything because I wanted to know what the effect would be. So I told him, I said, if, if you can do something about the now, you're going to, it's going to go a long way to helping people understand that you're on our side when you build this big facility. It's going to pave the way, you know, because people want to give you a chance, you know. I mean, people want it to be better. And so they've made some efforts just within the past week or so, and you reflected earlier when we got here that it has actually been a little bit better. It's not solved, but it's a little bit better. And, um, you know, they're get, they, they've firmly decided that they're going to get a two-stage incinerator. They're sourcing it right now. They've got bids, you know, and that's going to take care of the dead foul problem, you know, and, and we discussed at length this electrostatic screen that he's going to be using and what the particulate separation level is for that. And that if that eventually doesn't work, doesn't come to fruition, then they'll try something else, you know. And, um, you know, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with their efforts. I'm happy with his efforts and the friendship that he's shown me and the communication. And so that's another way to solve it. And I think that we're working towards that. There's some questions, you know, and, you know, I mean, we have to, we have to consider what everybody wants. You know, there's people in this community that want the facility to be built because they sell their feed to them and they, you know, that's, that's their livelihood, you know. And then there's people who don't like the odor, you know. And then there's people who own stock in that building, that, that project. And there's people who work for them, you know. And so what I'm trying to say, you know, like I guess I'm, I'm getting off track here, I'm sorry. But what I'm trying to say is that that's why we're here and I feel like what we need to do is we need to get together and we need to come up with a plan. So I don't know exactly, I'm not exactly sure how to make that happen. Do I have to make a, a move to call a special town meeting? Or according to the state regulations, I need to get a petition signed by t at least 10% of the, the community of the township? Or do we agree that this is a pro an ongoing problem and we can just call? A special town meeting for everybody to be here that that is concerned about this and that will constitute the quorum and then we can brainstorm and decide what are we going to do how are we going to do this because basically we've been fighting with each other the whole time you know I mean I just got here but that's my understanding you know and and feeling like you know there's ulterior motives and you're not helping and so I don't know exact exactly the procedure to do that but what I'm trying to do is officially request that some sort of committee or, you know, like a special town meeting, which I was reading, which, you know, can be called for instances like this, and we can enter into, into debate. And we can invite people from all sides. And, and we can let them know that, that, you know, once this debate is over, it's not like the problem's going to be solved, but we're going to have a plan. Because we haven't had a plan at all. We've never had a plan. You know, it's been kind of a, well, what can we do? Or I call this person or that person, or I read the right to farm law. And, you know, you guys got your lives and your things to do, so it, it, you don't need to carry the whole load. The, the town needs to carry the load. You know, we need to work together. So I don't, I don't know how to initiate that. And I, I'm asking if that's, if that's a good way to do this, or am I, you know, am I wasting time at the town level and we should be going to the county level? You know, because as the town, the conditional use permits you don't approve or disapprove them, you recommend whether they're approved or disapproved. So you really, in effect, like you said, what power do we have? You really, you know, as long as they're following the law, you don't have that. You don't have a power. Other than, you know, are you neighbors? Are you, you know, are you going to do the right thing? Or are we going to, you know, try and go up our chain of command to legally force you to
do something different or change that regulation, that law, you know? Because this has been going for, like, even from 1980, there were problems. And it's just gone on and on and on. So where's the solution, you know? Where's, where, when do we actually get together as a team and start working on it together and find out what we have to do in order to make our life better here? And so I'm, that's, the, that's the question that I'm posing to the board tonight. How do, how do we start that process? And is it within my purview to request that process to be started, for something to be put on the agenda, for a committee to be appointed to do that? What? I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. My first knee jerk would be that that's what the public hearings are all about. Right. And that would, you know, begin, which, you know, you've already had a couple already. So we have a pretty good idea. Um, unless things have changed and feelings of what you would like to see and would, um, has went away. It's, it's, not, it's not about what I want. Well, I mean, everybody, you know, yeah. But we, we don't even know what everybody wants because we haven't even gathered that information. Right, yeah. yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, and, you know, and a lot of times when it comes to a lot of the public hearings, when you get into a lot of the legislation, the people that really are for it are they're the movers and the shakers of what they're doing. A lot of times don't show up. It's all of the negative campaigning that is there. And we live and work, you know, in, in the neighborhood and everybody passes through there. So when it comes down to the public hearings and when, you, when the, everybody, when you come up with the suggestions, that is, you know, starts to pave the road for the items that would go into the conditions on the conditional use permit. Then right, but we, haven't, we haven't entertained any of that discussion, really. We haven't had a back and forth with the, you know, the constituents, haven't had a back and forth with the board about what we would like to see on a conditional use permit and what stipulations we have we not been given the conditions yeah i'm talking about the conditions that if, we would put on it if you as recall a caveat if you recall we had that on our agenda as a condition conditioned use for this and i said to powers that be how can we make conditions for something we have no idea what they are even applying for other than what they started here with us and that is the public process. I, I, I'm not sure you understand right. that. No, I, do. I mean, we meet every month. Two, three times a month our different committees meet. This is the public forum. I'm going to say this, too. Seated behind you is Anita Martin. Anita has started a special interest group, I would call it, Citizens for a Better Environment. She's, she's worked this for the last five or six years. That's right. And and there's, there's still no solution. And so I guess the thing that I'm trying to say is that the power, the weight that comes with a town board, you're, you're effectively the town mayor of the town of Lake Mills. You don't have to remind me. <laughs> you know? And so people put you in that position because they, they trust your judgment and your opinion. And so just because you're there, that carries weight. So a person like me who would single-handedly go up the political chain of command doesn't really have the impact that, you know, the town of Lake Mills has. And that's, that's been emphasized a number of times. And so the other thing about that is unification. You know, the town of Lake Mills, the board unifying with the community and resolving it, Come, coming up with a plan, resolving it with each other, you know, and so that we, we're all on the same page. Because right now, you know, it's not like that. And the conditional use permit is, is like, that's something that we can, it's a negotiating tool. So mm -hmm. if they want to get that grain conveyor over the road and that pipe under the road, that's something that would have to be recommended by the town board of Lake Have Mills. to be approved by the town. Approved. Right. And so there's, there's a bargaining chip there. There's a way for us to say, okay, we're, we're willing to approve that 
you know, but we, you know, this is our experience with whatever, and we want some assurances, we want some satisfaction from you that you are definitely going to use a two-stage incinerator, or that if this electrostatic screen doesn't work, or, you know, you, you, you have a backup plan, or something to that effect. I don't even know what that is at this point. That's right. We don't really know what those facts are, because we have not seen the permits yet. Right, but it's... We did have an email from Rick yesterday that said the permits are to be delivered to us. He wanted to know how many copies. None of us have read those yet. Anita has. I have one. I got one today from Zelda. Okay, but what I'm saying and is it's not too late to form some sort of a committee can, for that. can do along the way. But the process has begun. It began several months ago when they came here to introduce this to us. And I believe that they think the solution, and I think he's told you this, the solution is the dissolution of the old plant and the building of a new state-of-the-art plant. I think, I think you're mistaken. Me. I said earlier that I am very happy with what he's doing, and I did, did I not state that I, I'm for the expansion, I'm for the new project, because I think that it's going to eliminate the problem that they're having right now. It is the solution that and, they and I agree presented. with that. However, that's not the end of it, you know. There's, there's the NFP situation, and that's something that hasn't been addressed either. People, people are like, oh, I don't know why we don't, you know. They don't have, you know, they don't have an air permit. They don't have a wastewater permit. Apparently, I don't know, I heard, this is uh, Aaron Johnson told me that that company was sold in October to a new owner. And there have been, you know, we've discussed it in meetings before of plumes coming out of, of their stacks. And um, whether or not they're operating legally or not is not, I don't know that, but what I do know is that nobody's addressed it, you know. And so Creekwood is making these efforts and they came here and they let us know what they're doing and they had a discussion and some people got upset and some people didn't. And what I got from that, you know, in my meetings with Bobby Harris is that they are, I'm, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm convinced that they're moving in the right direction. So I feel like you're, you're, you're thinking that I'm against it or I'm, you know, I don't, I'm not exactly sure, but that's not the point. The point is that the problem still exists. So the town of Lake Mills, you know, maintaining a line of communication with Creekwood as to what they're going to do in the here and now and how that's going to unfold and that, you know, is there, is there a way to appoint somebody to be a liaison to communicate with them and report back regularly to the board about, you know, they're doing this, the, the, this effort, you know, this, it, you know, I mean, so, somebody who's monitoring that, actively monitoring that because it's a big problem in the community. You know, those are things we could be doing right now, and, and we still have the problem right now. You know, so in the here and now, there's still stuff to be done. But you're right, the process for their conditional use permit and their expansion, that, that process has started, and that's great, and we'll deal with that as the, as the time comes. But right now, there's nobody officially within the town of Lake Mills that is actually dealing with that. There's no committee, there's no nothing. There is, there is a perfectly good board here, Sarah and I are receiving information from Rick. What more would you have us do? It is my suggestion that you work with Anita or that you form your own grassroots group to do this. Okay. We are working as closely with Daybreak as we possibly can. I have not received any new information until this permit comes before us. It may very well be in the mailbox right now, but I have not read it. I feel like we're arguing, and that's not my intention. I, I gave I, you some sure suggestions. Argue, to be honest with you. I think, I, think I, I gave you some suggestions. I suggest that you form a grassroots group okay, but and that you continue to do the research that you have and to know that this is an elected group of officials who has been elected by the town folks to do this job. That's right, and I'm coming to the, these elected officials to advise me on how we as a town can pursue this as your constituent. And there are methods that I can utilize myself in order to force the board to do that. You know, and I can continue down that road. Like I said, that was my plan. I was mad. But you know, I'm not now. I want to work together and that's what I'm trying to tell you and you're telling me something opposite. You're getting mad at me. 
And if I'm being too aggressive, that is my apology. Not arguing. But what I'm saying is, we're not. That's a perfect example. We're not working together. You're getting mad, and you're telling me where to go, and we're not working together. We're still even you and me when I'm trying to express that. I don't want to, you know, use this specific chapter in the municipal code of the state of Wisconsin to tell you that the administrative law of Wisconsin State says that I have the right to form a motion. And, you know, what is that? You know what that's for? That's for people who can't get along. And, and I'm, I'm a little hyped up because you came at me, and that's, that, that's not what this is about. Sorry. You know, that's not what this is about at all. And I think that's why people aren't getting anywhere. <coughs> We're not working together. That's what I keep saying. I'm asking advice. I'm asking for I think, guidance. I think and not to be sent away, but how to start working here now, how to use the power of the board with the community to, to, to address the problem. Because that's not happening. What's happening is exactly what just happened right then. You know, people are getting angry. It doesn't help. I'm not attacking you. I'm, you know, I came here saying I was mad and I had all this stuff. I said that. And I realized that, that I was part of the problem. I wasn't part of the solution. I've just met you folks. I moved here last year, you know. I don't, I don't know what's happened before. I'm still trying to catch up with that. But what I know is it's been going on for a long, 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 long time. And you're tired of hearing it. You're tired of hearing people come up here and complain to you and yell at you and, and make accusations about stuff that you don't have control of. I get that. I'd be mad too. But that's not part of the solution either. Even if we don't accomplish anything, at least we reunite everybody, you know? That's what it's about because there's a big division between people here. And it's all about that. You know, and that's what this township is for. That's what those committees are for. That's what calling a town meeting is for. A town meeting, a special town meeting is called in order to open debate. Debate is for anybody who wants to come in and talk and you as well. I mean, you, you know, you, you sit there and listen to what people say and, and you listen to people get mad and complain. And that's not helping. That doesn't solve anything. But actually entering into the debate and making a decision as a township where everybody votes and says, this is what I want to do. This is, this is the course that we as a town want to take. Or not take, you know, and that's not what we're doing. Every month we have a meeting. Next month you have noticed that there will be a permit on file. We will be entertaining that. Okay, that, and that permit is for them to put a grain conveyor over the road. I don't think and so. And a waste pipe underneath it. Through. I haven't read it. That permit has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. And so in, in effect, it's a moot point because that permit is for them to do a construction project that, you know, we, we don't, like you said, we don't know if that's going to affect us or not. So it, it's not, it's not that's, that permit is not part of the problem. That permit is not even part of the discussion. I, I don't, I feel like it's not coming across. What I'm saying is, I, you know, I want to join together, like, if you form a committee, it says that one board member from the town has to be appointed to the committee as well as X number of town residents or voters or members, however you want to call them. Each town member is considered that. And then that committee is authorized by the town of Lake Mills to pursue this, to, to, to go over there and talk to them, to, to do the research. And or if, if this problem has been going on forever, then is, isn't that a problem with our statutes if they're operating legally and as a result we're the ones that are experiencing that and so we should be the ones to start telling people that and as a result if I like I said if I go up there and I say hey this is a problem that is not as effective as us as a board doing that as you know the town of Lake Mills has filed a complaint with whoever I mean when I asked you when I was here last time what has been done in the past, what kind of documentation has been done to try and address the problem, you know, over the years. And I didn't, you didn't say yes or no, but I didn't get an answer. And I assumed that meant that there wasn't anything officially that had been tried or done by the town of Lake Mills, officially. Is, and I mean, if that's true, 
then that's what I'm talking about. Us forming together as a group, as a township. You know, I mean, and do I have to officially say, I move to make a motion to form a committee to address the odor problem that's causing residents of this town to suffer? And then you go through the process of deciding whether or not to appoint that committee. And then that's another branch like the, like the joint Rock Lake committee. Oh, why, why, is that, why is there so much resistance for me to do that? I mean, that's what I'm asking. I'm asking, can you advise me on how to do that? How do I, how do, I do that? Do I, do, I, do I file a petition? Do I, do I ask the board in the open forum and then the board says, that's a great idea, let's do that. And then that's put on the agenda? Or is there, a, you know, is there another reason that I'm unaware of? That's what I'm trying to say. What, you know, they're monitoring the lake on a regular basis because it needs to be. This is a big problem. Doesn't, don't we need to have people directly involved with that, that are in the community that report directly back here and have talked to these people and they're monitoring the air, you know, the air quality complaint emails that come in and they, you know, they go check it out. Yeah, there's people doing that. But are those people associated with the board where the board is using their weight, their leverage to say, hey, you know, you got to do something about this. It's not, just, it's not just me getting in my car and going over there, you know? Or if they say too bad, so sad, we're operating legally, then isn't it this our first level of government to say we need to do something to amend this problem legally? Because people are suffering from it. You said that. You said... We know, we live in this neighborhood, we live in this community. That's, that's old news. People suffer from it. Our lifestyles suffer. We don't want, you know, we don't want to be outside in the summertime sometimes, you know, because it's unpleasant. It's, that's old news. There's a problem and nobody's, nobody's from the township is really, I don't understand why, why there's no, No control there, no, no jurisdiction of the township having an open line of communication with these large farm facilities that are producing these emissions that may or may not be legal. That's not, you know, we could pursue that all day long and we could henpeck through all the, you know, it's a problem. You know, it's a problem in our community. And so our community has a responsibility to bring it to our community advisors. And our community advisors have the responsibility to decide what course of action to take instead of none. You know, and so it's not about the conditional use permit. It's not about, it's, it's about the odor. It's about the quality of life. And that's, you know, that's what we need to talk about. That's what we, you know, we're not doing that. I mean, is it something as simple as saying some, you know, how do we, how do I make a motion for the, for the board to investigate that, to investigate the option of creating, I don't, I don't even know how to say it, creating a committee, appointing a person to be a liaison. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have, I can't understand the, the Wisconsin state statutes for townships for what it says on how to actually do that. I'm new to this thing. And, and so that's, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to put my effort in. I'm trying to be part of the solution. I'm trying to say, I'll, I'll work to make that happen. I'm asking the board to do the same thing, to make an effort. Maybe we don't, maybe we don't get a solution. Maybe we don't change the regulation. But at least we're making an effort. And we're not doing that. We're just getting mad at each other, you know? So how do I do that? This, I move to pose the question to the board on how to create a situation where we can deal with this problem on a local level. During the annual meeting, that is the meeting of the people of the Tunnel Lake Mills. So at that time, you know, the floor is open to all of the residents and all of the electors. Um, during the public comment and question, and you can do this anytime throughout the year, is the time to do exactly what you're doing right now. 
you present your case and then ask if you could be put on an agenda item exactly. and then it can be and then it's up to the chair and the secretary to put it on the agenda or not put it on the agenda and then well we I have to I have to move and then somebody has to second right no 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 what you would do is during the public comment you would suggest to the board that you would like to have an agenda agenda item put on for next month then we can then openly discuss if it's an agenda item right now public comment means that the public can come in and comment but we really are not allowed to really respond right that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying a, 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 you know bland comment so that's so like you're saying doing debate you, or open it, forum or something yeah, like so that. so if you want to be put on the agenda, um, you know, that's something that could be considered for the month of February. Okay, um, great. Which, uh, I'm assuming I haven't seen anything yet, but I'm assuming that, you know, daybreak, if they, they want to break ground come spring, that they're really going to have to get the ball rolling because between the town board, the plan commission, town board, the county, and the state, Three months can go by like that and nothing's going to happen. Again, we don't have to respond, but I am going to respond. When Daybreak Creekwood was having a uh, major wastewater issue, we did, as a board, and Lee, I think you were on the board then too, or was it Jim Colgrove? It was Jim. Might have been Jim. Yeah. We were invited out there, well actually it was a forced invitation, to take a tour, to look at what they were doing, what their plan of action was, because it was, Anita, intolerable. When, when was this? Oh, uh, I don't know, you've been on the board, this is your third year? Yeah. So it's been four years ago, four or five years ago. Okay. And we, did everything that we felt we could to strong arm them to make changes and follow through with them to make sure they did. Some of the issues they had there, they were sold a bill of goods by an engineer that said this was going to work. Their digester is going to work and it's going to be, you know. So you're talking next... about the waste pond, not Correct. the fertilizer, right? Right, yes, okay. the waste okay. pond. Okay, thank you. Because you're getting a lot of hydrogen sulfide gas coming off it, and it's th those ponds are just like a lake, where they will turn over in the spring and in the fall. Well, the digester wasn't doing exactly what it was supposed to, so you had untreated material coming out and it was exposed to the air. So then you would get ice. Then when they turned over, it was pretty tough. <coughs> So we were on them and did just about everything that we possibly could do. And after the tour, we went in and we sat down with the powers to be and demanded results and wanted to know exactly by the numbers what they were going to do and what they were expecting to do. Okay. Then, slowly but surely, it doesn't happen overnight, they put in an aeration pond. They put in additional aerators. Still wasn't good enough. They put in more aerators, which then kind of really, it didn't take it away, but it really subsided by 90% probably. You still notice it a little bit, but. Um, so we didn't sit back and do nothing. Okay, I just uh, never we, got a we, response, so that's. We did what we could. Um, a lot of times our hands are tied. The DNR every year, and I don't know what the schedule is, they have open public hearings. They have them all around the counties because there's a lot of CAFO farms around the different counties. They will have all of the new proposed rules for uh, wastewater treatment, um, landfills, and uh, CAFO manure handling. And even though a lot of those are separate items, a lot of it gets thrown into the same pot because in count of, I, 
Animal manure doesn't have anything to do with wastewater in this, the city of Milwaukee. But could, could I it interject gets a statement? In. No, let David Okay, finish. I'm sorry. So anyway, at that time, that is when you would have the ear to, not particularly legislators, but usually the powers of the DNR, which, okay. you know, report right straight to the governor. Um, then your other step would be um, the state of Wisconsin's uh, Secretary of Agriculture. He would be a good ear. Um, I have been in his office, and um, we have worked with, because we were having some crude oil pipeline issues, and then obviously we get on the subject of manure handling and all that. And super nice, sit down on my desk, because let me pull up some emails. So I pulled, he pulled up the emails, and it was just email after email after email of people, you know, bringing up the issues of odors and mishandling and over-applications. And uh, a lot of it is, I was seeing that possibly, you know, just, you know, not a real good understanding of, you know, sitting in agriculture, you know, possibly just, you know, don't understand it. But um, so he get, they get a lot of pressure. Um, but there's a few avenues that, you know, that process, and a lot of times they're not highly publicized, uh, but it does happen. Um, let's see, what was the other point I went? Oh, the other point about the town board <coughs> is we do have an obligation that when we have some an agenda item that we do have to research some of those things. Sarah and Hope are generally um, take the lead on that, a lot of that stuff. But when you come to this meeting tonight, the town board meeting, and I, I don't want to come off as being nasty or anything, this is really actually a meeting of the town board, not a meeting of the public. So on some town boards, it's, you know, uh, I don't want to make you guys feel like you're we're grateful to you, but they don't even put public comments on because it's not required to be on there. Technically, the way I understand, and I know you got the old rules of Roberts and the new ones and all that, us three are the judges. You guys come in, you present your case, we listen to the facts, we make a decision, and we're done. So, I don't know, that's you guys have something to add that's kind of my feeling on the whole thing. But. Is, is there a question before the board right now? From me, is there a question from the board that would be? I think that we've heard completely your take on what is going on. I think we have heard that comment tonight. And this is not on the agenda for discussion at our meeting. Okay. We will take what you have said into consideration. And I think that you have read some things into this that are not true. That's, that's possible. That's completely possible. I think you need to stick with the process. Okay. I think you need to take my suggestion and form a grassroots group or work with the existing grassroots group. I think Dave's suggestions were excellent too. Okay. And if you think we're not doing our homework on this. No, I didn't say that. You implied that. There are many assumptions that you have made tonight that I feel are not true. Well, if that's, if that's your understanding, that is my miscommunication. I think now it's time for other people to comment. The other thing, Tony, is I think when you guys were here last month, I, I was under the opinion that you guys were on the right track because the people that not that the whole town in the city doesn't have a stake in this thing, but all the neighbors have a larger stake. Yeah. And I've stated that several times. You know, so several times I've stated that. None of these decisions like are going to be made. A rule to order. You are going to be under my rule tonight. And what I just said was, I oh, think we I am not easily bullied and I am not bullying you. This and is this an official is, meeting I, of the town of And Lake I would like Hills. to call a rule to order. I've stood up during the public comment section and I'm being yelled at. So 
I'm I calling a rule to order. I think it's time we moved on. Is that it? It's, is there anyone else who would like to make to, a public to comment? To discontinue tonight? My, my statement? My, yes, my I think comment? you've taken enough of our time. And I is think that within I've your purview? You, yes, it certainly is in my is purview. It? Yes. Okay, then I'll discontinue. Thank you. Now Thank I you. am mad, Tony. But the difference is, I'm telling you I'm mad. You're not telling me. Now let's move on. Is there someone else who would like to make a comment tonight? I guess I would. Please, I would like you to come to the podium and make your comment. I, I would like it if David could finish the thought that he was making there finally before. I'm sorry, I hope that you did you know, take over what he was saying. You were finishing up with Tony, and you weren't given that opportunity. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, wow. With that last tirade, I lost track of where it was as well, but there was something there. Hmm. I'm just remembering exactly what we, uh, okay. I think it really pretty much said all of it. Okay, then I think picking up where, where Tony left off, I, I don't think it's unreasonable for him or us to ask to be an item on the agenda. And I think that in all of the stuff that was going on there, that that's getting overlooked. And no, that no, was, no, that it was certainly is on that our his, That was his request. We will put that on our agenda for next month. Also will be on the agenda the review of the Creekwood permits. It doesn't mean we're going to be making a decision, but both of these things have been taken into consideration and will be on our agenda. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to make a comment? Moving on. Item eight, application of reviews filed. We do have this application for the condo plat um, on County Highway B but this will be um, entertained next month after they go back to the Planning Commission. Item nine, old business. A discussion and decision on an intergovernmental agreement with Cambridge Fire and EMS. Guess we'll just wait to see it, huh? Yeah, yeah. and our next meeting is scheduled, uh, unless something comes up uh, March, I think it's the third Wednesday in March, I believe. Okay, so nothing until then. Yeah. Item B, discussion and decision on the 2020 reevaluation. Sarah, you want to give us a little update? Well, you had said that you talked to. Yes. Um, yeah. We, at our last budget meeting, decided that we, um, we are in a position always to be keeping our property values and valuations up to snuff. And so the next round of evaluations would be. Um, what do you call it? An on-site evaluation? Yeah, a walk around. Which is a walk around where people come to your home and they look <laughs> at your home. Um, I guess it's your decision whether you allow them to come in or not, but then they value your home from the tour that they do. I think the last time we did this was about maybe 10 years ago, eight? Yeah, generally what it is is on the zero year is when you have the visit the walk, the walk around the walk through and on the five year is when they just do a book drive by and it's not something we just do for fun because it costs what about thirty thousand right. dollars to do that it is something that we were talking it's, about budgeting into yeah. our 2020 budget we usually do it on a two year set aside and earmark one year and then the second year to to pay it off and it's, like I said, we don't do this for fun. It's the state requires us to make sure that every the the revals are always within about ninety five percent of what um, the state figure is going to be. Mainly what the walk around is for to make sure that you get if anybody put in a deck or some sort of an addition, then the assessor can pick up on that, and obviously then you're assessment of change so yeah. all right so I had occasion to bathroom in the basement and <laughs> I had occasion to talk with our assessor about some property values I was doing a little research work and um, he mentioned to me that uh, the legislature has passed a new uh, bill that um, will allow homeowners to refute the idea of anyone coming for an in-home inspection that this may be a thing of the past. Yeah. And so I think he is going to look at the strategy here to see if it is a valuable thing or 
are we going to be sending letters and then not getting any returned? I mean, I don't know how this is going to go down. Um, but I'm going to leave it up to him to say how he wants to handle it. I'm sure there's going to be examples of other towns that are undertaking the same, or cities or other municipalities that are undertaking the same evaluation schedule, and we'll be hearing what they have to say about it. Yep. He just wondered if it was a moot point, that people would get the letter and then they would just say, no, nope, we're still going to have to do the drive-by, we're still going to have to budget for some of it, but I think that maybe the days of the on-site evaluation are over. And I agree, I agree. So we'll wait to hear more. You and I can talk to him again. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe we'll have him come and give us a little presentation. It's certainly something that is not on the front burner, but I wanted you guys to know. I, I haven't read any of the legislation, so here, I'm sure we'll hear about it at our district meetings. Item C, um, discussion and decision on ordinance cleanup. This is where you get to make a big stab at it, Dave. Um, we were, it has been recommended to us that we look again. Um, first of all, I feel we need a raising ordinance in our township for when people are taking down houses. We need to look at how the debris is handled and how these things go down. Um, also, when we were working on the subdivision, our engineer suggested that we review our subdivision ordinance and our driveway ordinance. These have recently been worked at um, and looked at and put into place, but he has suggested that we do some work on this. And what I would like to have is either help from you two to get this um, review going, or I am suggesting that we look at the idea and hear a presentation from the Civitech guy to help us get these two things in order. Um, are you amenable to that? Would you like to have a presentation from him? Do one or all of us want to take on an ordinance and codify it and work at it? Do we want to give this um, responsibility to the Planning Commission? How do we want to take on a look at our ordinances? Well, the same money customarily we've always done is the plan commission. That'd be goes. I think that'd be. And then a lot of times, okay. you know, that night that we're doing, you're doing it. We all are here anyway, and kind of kick it down the road. And then, you know, then it comes to the town board for review, and then off to the attorney. The only thing is, is I know some of these consultants gets gets rather expensive. Yes, yes. Um, and obviously we're not. So who's much. going to take the lead on this? That's what I want you to think about. We it's fine for us to talk about it, but how are we going to take the lead and make it happen? So would you like, if I were to bring like a raising ordinance to the planning commission to review, is that? So like the step that you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, I think that would be good. Okay. I think then we could talk to them about um, working on the subdivision ordinance. I'm sure that we can come up with a raising ordinance. Yeah, I mean, because I've already done some research on that. And there's All a right. lot of them out there. So. All right. Yeah. Is that agreeable to everyone? Yeah. All right. Item 10, new business. A, an update on highway expenditures and grants. Here we go again. I did apply for the grant for Rock Lake Road. I also applied for the grant in our rotation with the other county. Um, for a trip? Yes, for the TRI grant. That's what it's called now. The other grant is a discretionary grant. That's where the D comes from in DRID. Um, I applied for those grants, one for Corth Lane, one for Rock Lake Road. Those grants go into the state, I think around the 15th of January. I had a tremendous amount of help from the highway department to work the new WAMS system. It's pretty complicated. You have to use their form and um, work online with their um, equipment. And so that's kind of where we're at. Um, I think we should rewrite our three-year road plan. We are only um, required by 
the Department of Transportation to have a three-year plan instead of a five-year plan um, written down, and I would like to undertake that, but I thought maybe you guys would want to put some priorities forward. Looks to me like Crossman Road is going to be one of those things we may need to look at in the next five years. <coughs> The question I had hope is, that, and, and I know what you're talking about with Rock Lake Road and, and the entirety of it, but um, <coughs> Airport Road is in worse shape. Yes, it is. So so we move Airport up. Yeah, uh, that's my opinion. All right. And Crossman Road, there's no doubt that right. You know, it's it's it, the cracks are just getting mm -hmm. bigger, wider, and deeper. And I don't know, did you ever have Scott's Construction look at? trying to blow them out, crack fill them, and then put okay. stone in them, and then reseal them over top of that again. It seems well, that's to what we're going to be doing this spring. Any other roads that come to the top of your list here? Mud, right down. Mud Lake. Yeah, I was going to say, been down <laughs> Mud Lake a little later, lately. Right down this way. All right. Off of A. That would get me a good start. So what I'd like to do is put that road list together Knowing that is a moving target, I mean, it really has to change constantly. Yeah, yeah. But we will have it then on file. I will work on that so that I can present that at our next meeting. Otherwise, I think things are going fine. I've been very thankful that it hasn't been really icy or snowy. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, a little warm-up helps. A good thing. I don't believe we've ever received anything from Mr. Forrest. Huh. For Could, December? Other than sand and salt. No, the have, salt bill came. We don't have his new... New rates. We don't have his rates. We haven't oh, got a bill right. either. He's never given us his rates. So I'll ask him for those. Okay, anything else? So, sir, what'd you do with December's then that just, just gets tacked on to next year's then? Yeah, he, it, actually, he hasn't billed us in December for a couple of years. Usually just Oh, get okay, because yeah, a lot of times it'll hold it to oh. January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Rent, the March payment's coming up, right? <coughs> Item B, discussion and decision on an agreement for engineering services with Corey Horton for R.A. Smith. Um, you have that paperwork, Sarah? Yes, yeah. we all have it. <laughs> Entering into this agreement to have Corey supervise the condo flat that we're working on. Now, this is not the same Corey that... No. Okay. <laughs> My Super. First thought. <laughs> you guys are reading mine too. <laughs> it's general engineering. The other question I had about this whole thing, hope is, um, heirs. Heirs has always done our engineering, and you know they did the the north with. Um, yes. So then, what is the difference between this and heirs? You want the straight answer? No, just the truth is good. The truth is what you're going to get. Um, basically, when um, Jay Smith and I were working on the North Shore Estates plat, Jay said to me he wished that we wouldn't have to work with Mike Payant at Ayers. Um. And the suggestion was made by Mark Sewell that we work with Corey on this project. Okay. So right. I thought that we had the authority to pick and choose here as we're picking and choosing yeah. with lawyers. Yeah. Other consultants, we can pick and choose and decide sure. what we'd like to do. All of these firms request that these things be in place as mm -hmm. we begin, and so that's why it's on our agenda okay. tonight. And it's fine. I was just kind of curious. All right, so we need to make a decision. I guess I will make a motion. I would motion that we enter into the Professional Engineering Services Agreement for Consulting Engineer Services with Corey Horton for the um, firm R.A. Smith in Madison. I'll second it. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the agreement, please say aye. Aye. aye and I'll oppose the same sign. Thank you. C, discussion and decision on 2017 budget amendments. Sarah. Um, I need a little more time to do some more accounting on that. I got really close and We are going to have some adjustments, so. All right. I prefer to wait until February. All right. So look at our highway numbers and kind of come back to that mm -hmm. next month. Okay. Um, item D, board expense sheet approval. 
Does anyone have any expenses? I did ask Sarah to, I looked ahead, um, March, is it 3rd? There's a district oh. meeting in Juneau, it's a Friday. I have been going up there in the winter months for this meeting. I did ask her to uh, cut a check for them. So uh, my um, attendance will be at that district meeting in March. Because they Randy's too, right? Yes, so there is another. So second on, yeah, second. Friday the second. So if anybody oh, so. wants to go with me, or if you want to go to Randy's, That's on swell. the third. And which, what day is the third then? Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Friday or Saturday. Just let me know so I can. Post the food it. is yeah. always really good. Oh, yes. no. Yeah. no, I didn't read the uh, the magazine yet. Um, is that the B O R two training? Yes, there is board of review okay. training. I don't know who's up for that. Who needs it? We I know. I, I know. I do. Yeah, me too. Okay. Did you do it last year? Or no. It's only every other year, but I can't. Yeah, every other year. Yeah. yeah. There is board review training that morning. It like so. somebody did it last year, but I could be wrong. So okay. It's the so the, it's second, or the second, or, second in Juneau or the third in Whitewater. Okay. Lee, okay. are you going to go to either one of them? What, I'll think about it. When's know. the second? Is that during the day? or? Yeah. That? Yeah, they're usually all dayers. Yeah, I couldn't do the second, so it'd have to be the... That's what I was thinking about in the third. Yeah, that's the white water one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you guys got some time to think about it. The registrations are due. What does it say? I think um, it goes to sixty dollars after ten days, less than ten days before the meeting. So well, you got some time. We'll let you know after the meeting. All right. Okay, item 11, correspondence. Look at that pile of... It's not much. I've got a thank you from the optimists for letting the, letting them use their... Use the town hall... Sorry, I'm shivering here. For um, the Adopt-A-Family program that they do every year, Christmas time. Uh, a note, I will put this on the website too, but I had some questions about Christmas tree pickup at the curb. John's usually takes those during the January bulk pickup, which would be next week. Next week. Uh, we will have a primary in February. Oh, I thought we weren't going to do that. We weren't going to, but yes, now we are. St uh, <laughs> statewide for Justice of the Supreme Court, and there is also a Lake Mills School District primary. All right. That will be what's, February, what's the date of that February 20th. Mean? All right. I have an uh, inquiry from Jefferson County about <coughs> uh, our, our maps that they print for us every year. Just want to update how many copies we need. And I think that I should talk with her. Yeah, I thought you might Give want to that. do that. All right, thank you. Yep, and then just the Alliant Energy uh, newsletter that comes quarterly or so. If okay. anybody wants to take a look at what's going on there. We did receive our highway... Mm -hmm. The general transportation aids, aids. number. Mm -hmm. And so. I also had a letter, I should have brought it. I had a letter from, um, must be a relative of Scott Construction who has broken away from Scott and is doing a separate business. Hmm. Ooh, a little competition. I thought maybe I should talk to Bob about that, see what that was. But I thought that was interesting. Um, they are offering to do... Um, Seal coating, crack filling, those kinds of things, too. All right, item 12, meeting scheduled. February 6th is the Planning Commission at 8. February 6th is also the Joint Rock Lake Committee at 6. And February 13th is our town board meeting at 8 p.m. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Meeting is adjourned.